Shooting it raw? Yes. Shooting it raw. It really means being mindful and really looking at the pictures that I want to take. It's about really choosing what it is that I want to then do something with. So let me uh, dive into the first photo that we're going to talk about because you it's walk and talk. Or uh, just well, maybe we should just talk? sit. Sit. Yeah, Let's sure. just sit. Yeah. So the the first image um, that we're going to start with is the uh, sunbird. Yeah. Which is just. I mean, all of your photos are. I mean, if this is a podcast, so hopefully people will go check out the images on the website or on YouTube or whatever. But the the sunbird is amazing. Why start with that image? I mean, for, you've, got, you've got so many incredible wildlife shots. Why the sunbird? I think the reason I chose that one is because it marked a step in my development as a photographer. Oh, wow. So I started as a photojournalist, but then I went into media and was sales and marketing at The Economist. And to the, uh, didn't, you know, I, I picked up a camera, but I, I really wasn't doing much photography. Mm. And in 2018, I left Reuters and began being full-time retired if you like right and uh, so took up my photography again that's when I began the daily blog mm. and that's uh, when I realized right what do I need to know and actually when you when you really I think the big difference for me coming back to the idea of everyone being a photographer and the idea of being a professional photographer is the, the ability and the time mm. and the knowledge you gain from doing it full-time with a an idea to learn as much as you can mm -hmm. about how to make the best image right right and then that's where i got to with that sunbird because it was a case of okay the, one of the first things you have to do is you can walk around and i certainly do take a lot of pictures walking around but actually going to where the the, the prey species is if you like but you want to hunt it comes back to hunting yeah, yeah, in a yeah, way yeah. it's going to find it and i knew that that particular tree that hong kong rose at that particular time of year mm. would attract the sunbirds sure. so it was first of all knowing where you can go and where there is a decent place that you can get because i was about eight meters away from it when i took that oh, photo well, which is nice. quite close right considering it's a very flighty little bird yeah and it, I also went uh, over a period of about uh, almost two months to try and get that photo. Oh, wow. Yeah. So going very early in the morning before the sun's up because mm. the sun makes all those harsh shadows sure. or later in the evening. And then having the equipment, the tripod with the Wimberley head, the 800 millimeter lens and mm. then the ability to use it. And it all came down. What I wanted to do was actually that was and I used that image as the, the primary photo for my exhibition was then do an exhibition. Okay. Which meant, how do I take a six centimeter bird mm. and blow it up into a two meter print? Right, wow. So then the bird became 35 centimeters big. Right. So it was, I suppose for me, that photo represents all of the expertise and knowledge, ability that mm. I built on over the course of about, I suppose, six months of really trying to learn my craft. Right. And that was that image that I ended up with. I think that was probably uh, January 2019, after right. about a year of doing my full-time blog and learning how to take better pictures. So yeah. kind of... What's, okay, what's the title of the blog? A Wild Creatures Hong Kong Dot org. Right. Okay. So it's on Facebook. It's on. I do it actually as a as a daily email. A lot yeah. of people oh, nice. like having it in their inbox in the morning. I get a lot of feedback. Those are the, if you like, those sort of two or three different types of people. There's the people who are really connected, who want to see it every day, who write to me if there's a typo oh, or, nice. or if, if they can't <laughs> open it or whatever, which is really nice. There's about 600 of those. Oh wow. And then there's about. Um, three three and a half thousand on facebook who sort of look at it and like it and, yeah. and whatever you know some of them are not engaged so from memory or if you like i can i can describe um uh i can actually describe what the image is because for the people who don't know what a sunbird is right like it's actually a fork tail fork tail yes yeah, a yeah. fork tail you have to be specific okay so the image here uh the it's in the landscape f format uh you have the full body of the bird across um, what's nice, uh, you know, it's the, the, the shadows aren't harsh, so the lighting is very soft. And yet, this bird has this beautifully curved beak and 
really bright iridescent almost turquoise head and some highlights of turquoise in, in, in its tail. How else would you describe this bird? Like for example, in this image, how would you, for somebody who's, who's kind of, who can't look at it right now, it's a super close, super sharp, beautiful, uh, uh, beautifully composed image where the background is mostly a soft, out of focus green, and it's on um, what kind of rose? What's the rose? It's called a Hong Kong rose. Hong I can't Kong remember rose. the Latin name, but it's a, it's a sort of large, well, mid to large, um, bushy tree. Right. Which a lot of birds just go crazy mm. for. So yeah. It's a great tree to find if you're looking for birds. Sure. Like, so, so, so the the flower it's flowering a little bit, and it's this hint of pink. I mean, it's a, y- your photos are always consistently arresting and. This one I wanted to actually point out that mm. the, what, the thing for the, this for me mm. was when you blow it up, okay, yeah, you can see the hairs just in front of its beak. Oh wow! And wow, given wow. that that's a six centimeter bird, I mean, I'm working on a um, 800 millimeter, and my depth of field at that point is about two and a half centimeters. Mm. So you have to. I mean, the great thing about that is if you get the focus in the right place, mm. you get that lovely bokeh. You get that lovely blurriness, yeah. which allows then the subject to stand out. Yeah. Um, and the colours. Again, when you look at sort of the colour wheel, and and you look at the complementary colours and the contrasty colours. You know, the, the the turquoise and the and the pink are really highly complementary. Oh, and for it sure. Makes it more dynamic. And so. to see it as a large print, I mean, because in a way, it's what I what's interesting about your photographs, and it'll emerge, uh, is that it's like it's seeing that, that that's the beauty of photography. It's like it's when you see something that you couldn't see normally. You know, we couldn't see in that way, and then so you get these moments. Uh, the pelican one we'll go into later, but in this particular one here, where you're so intimate with this with this beautiful species of bird, uh, that many people may not even really get to see up close, and so that's magical, really. Now you have an ability to to look and see and really pick out the most interesting thing. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm hats oh. off to you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Because actually, when I did the exhibition. Mm. It was called Portraits of Wild Creatures. Right. So one of the tricky things was, if you want a really nice photo, you normally provide a large amount of habitat, Mm -hmm. and then the subject may be a, a, I don't know, a tenth or a fifteenth, or maybe even a twentieth of the size within the general frame. Right. Whereas I deliberately went for very closely cropped images of the particular animals, because I wanted to show the feathers around the the owl's beak or mm-hmm, the, mm-hmm. the eye of a lizard or whatever it is yeah. because you don't get to see those no i know and yeah. i love it when i'm looking at my photos and i get to blow them up because i can blow them up to you know 300 yeah, percent yeah and you, you see things mm-hmm. which you don't yeah, yeah. normally so I, no I'm, I'm thank you for bringing that out no, because it's sure. actually a key part i think of what i what i and that was what i was trying to do at that stage right. of my photography right. really was was bring out those amazing details of nature and I think uh-huh. I got a lot of feedback like you point out that that people were seeing things that they'd never seen before or did not know that that animal existed right in Hong Kong right because I had I think at the end I had about 90 different species mm. in that exhibition that's so quite a lot. coming from North America coming from Canada when I saw this bird I thought oh that's that must be a hummingbird that must be because uh, you know the the iridescent head and, and then the, the beak, the thin thin sharp beak. It's not a proper hummingbird. No, but I mean actually you can see it. Sometimes it, it does actually, uh, and the females too. They actually hover. Uh-huh. But I think I'm not sure of the entire species definition. I don't want to get in trouble mm. with all the right. all the birders. But right. <laughs> I mean, get in trouble. They are they are very they're quite different species because yeah, yeah, these sure. are sunbirds, and some yeah. birds have their own. Uh, species and yeah. denominations. And so. I've definitely seen I've seen them in the wild, uh, right? You know, and I, and I do photography as well. And um, I, it really looking at your images compared to so what I can get away, well, not get away with, or can capture. Um, there's such a like you're so clearly are dedicated to getting close and intimate and really seeing a side of these animals that people don't normally see which is which is actually the the, a gift really I mean it's amazing Um, 
Anything else you want to add to this about this particular image? No, I mean, there's always that serendipity. There's always that bit of luck. Because mm -hmm. when you look at the image and his beak, because it was shot against right. actually the building up there, so you've got this, this white wall which ah. to reflect some light back, uh -huh. which I'm looking for. So ah, that's deliberate. Oh, yeah. But the fact that his beak and, and the point of his face, because when uh, uh, for a photo, you always look at the point of the highest contrast mm -hmm. where you lead the viewer's yeah. eye to. Yeah. And had his beak been over the flower, right. it would still be, a, a, I think, a, a lovely photo, mm -hmm. but it would have lacked some of that, oh, look at that. Okay. And uh, so you always got that element of cross your fingers and yeah. wait to see what you've got in your viewfinder, because there's no way mm. I could see that his beak was Perfect. perfectly yeah. lined up Perfect. on the on the white background and uh, the, the, like for the people who who aren't are, are into photography this kind of thing is almost like eye porn you know it's just like oh it's just so beautiful it's like it's so um it's so so great now what's amazing and what and <clears throat> clearly you know your gear well enough to know how to get this is that the sharpness is just you know out of this world um it just, yeah. So I, as you say, like the beak really does come out to this fine, perfect point. And it's, uh, yeah, it's just, I mean, I, I just love this image. And I know why you're running with this image first, because it's <laughs> such a high impact shot. And that was, yeah, where I was beginning of 2019, I think. So right. Right before I had the exhibition. So okay. That, that for me marks a point in my, I think, uh, development of, of where I was. It was to get up close and, and, and also show people and... That's when I had the idea for the um, for the booklet originally as right. well about the ID. Right. So moving on to the next photo, um, which you call "I'm Not Going Easy," and this is an awarded photo. Uh, and uh, okay, let me just describe for the people listening. Okay, so it's a very close cropped shot of a pelican. Uh, it's a great white pelican. So you see the top bill, which is quite thin, and you see the extended skin of the bottom bill and you see the veins the bloody veins the network of veins kind of extending and in it is is a fish um that do you know the species of yes. fish and actually this image is just which i'm not i can't actually share too much at the moment but it's just won another award so oh it's under embargo at ah. the moment um in, in the conservation category sure. because that is a pleco fish. Okay. And a pleco fish of these, as you can see, very large, very spiny mm. aquarium fish right. from Latin America. Oh. And wow. people like the red eared sliders here, this is that was in Singapore, people actually let them go because uh, they get really big and nasty. Right. And then two things happen. First of all, they have no natural predators. Wow. And B, they eat everything else in the pond oh, shit. so after you know three or four years you've got a thousand of those and not much no, else yeah, so yeah. actually yeah to, to look at what uh, that image mm. is the one of the defensive mechanisms of the pleco this very large scaly black fish mm -hmm. is to throw out it's got these very large spiny fins oh wow so you can see yeah, yeah, it's yeah, actually yeah, caught yeah. and coming <gasps> through right the the, the skin. side of the pelican so i watched this for about half an hour, Holy shit. 30 minutes, and this poor pelican, what is wrong with this fish? And wow. he put it down, and he picked it up, and he tried to swallow wow. it, and every time, this pleco would throw out his spiny fins. Yeah. And uh, so, while I was taking the photos, what I was trying to do with this particular one, um, but it's coming back to how this photo was taken. You, you have kind of, you have the in-situ shot, so you know the kind of photo that you want to take. Right. Then you have the, in situ but I'm going to move it a little bit so mm. maybe I move the praying mantis onto a nice flower okay and then you have the um, completely lucky you're focused on the sunbird and I don't know maybe a, a, a python comes out of the bush right. and, and grabs it yeah. and like, oh At my that goodness moment, and, yeah, yeah. and then that's the shot so yeah. that, it, it's that kind of shot where you yeah. have to be ready but fortunately because it went on for so long I could move around wow. and try and get it backlit. So that's right, right. why wow. you can see. And technically, that's quite a difficult shot because if it's backlit, it's normally deeper I, in shadow, yeah, right? Yeah. No, it's so it's, it's, that's it's, when you get both the because you've got two areas, you've sure. got two hooks mm -hmm. here. Normally, you should only have one. Mm -hmm. You've got the head coming through here, which are areas of contrast, but then you've got the this area of these veins of the craw of the yeah, bird. Yeah, yeah. 
No, it is. It is. Uh, it is. It's a very powerful image. It has a very strong conservation message. Sure, sure. These fish you have to go. Yeah, we're, yeah. we're finally. I mean, where was it? Somewhere it's got this huge problem with iguanas now. Okay. Oh. And, oh. Yeah. And uh, they've started to allow people to hunt them and eat mm, them. So, right. 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 So I'm not sure we're going to hunt and eat plecos. No. Wow. Well. Yeah, the, uh, uh, how many, when you go, okay, so one of the things about shooting with film that I remember back in the day uh, is that each time you trip the shutter, you hear like a little cash register go, cha -ching. okay, that's like, you know, 60 cents or whatever. Uh, with digital, we can just shoot thousands forever. Is, what's your style? Because different people shoot in a different way. So some people will just burst photographs, blah, 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 you know, like just go, just 50 photos in a, in a, in a series. And then out of those, pick the one. Is that kind of your style, or do you 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 specifically shoot like? I have two styles now. Okay. Um, and again, I think they're quite conscious. The first one is because it's so easy. One of the temptations is, let's say, you've got your your mantis on the table in front of you, or your, or your bird over there. Like, yeah. Actually, from I suppose it's because well, I've trained myself, but also from my film background, it's like, well, hold on a minute. What is the correct shutter speed? Right. What is the correct aperture? It's more what is my correct exposure? Where ha and, and um, photography is like sculpture more than painting in that you're trying to take away. Right. So right. you're left with just the subject That's that you great. want want to show. Yeah. And so if I'm if I'm trying to do that, then maybe I'll take a photo. And if that photo is not right, because mm. I can now look at it, my little LCD screen, sure. which is amazing, then I will see, well, do I need, maybe I'll bracket it with some more depth of field. Right. So maybe I'll do F8, F10, F14 or something. Mm. But otherwise, I will try and take as few shots as possible. Right. Because I know mm. what I want. Yeah, you're, di yeah, you're dialed in, yes, for sure. Um, for sure. But um, in contrast to that, if I've got a, uh, a tailor bird, maybe, which is hunting in a, in a, in a little shrubbery, mm. and he's moving around, and he, I can see that there's a caterpillar, then I'll start pushing yeah, yeah, my yeah. button, and it'll go, yeah, and yeah. he's bouncing around, he's got the caterpillar done, and then, then I have the horrible <laughs> thing of <laughs> Going having through 200 yeah, photos yeah, yeah, yeah. and trying to find the, the one, yeah. because that's always the problem. And I think it's, it's quite a big thing to actually stop trying to take so many photos mm. and try and get because you should know what it is that you want right with flash it's a little bit different because with flash you kind of have to take the photo look at it dial it up dial it right. down change right. this right. move your iso change that yeah but otherwise um i, I think uh, if, if you're setting up a photo unless you're moving around a lot if you're just taking one photo then you I don't know if you should be able to take it in one photo, but right. maybe you should be able to take it in ten. Sure, sure. No, I got that. Okay. No, that's amazing advice for people who don't spend as much time with their cameras as you do. But it's great advice, of course. But I think, yeah, that's part of the... I think one of... Because I did actually look at doing some photo courses, and I think one of the first things was start with the image in mind. Right, right. Well, it's more deliberate, for sure. Because if for you sure. take a picture of this, you, you stand here, yeah. whereas actually, well, hold on a minute, I want it with a nicer background, right. so maybe I should lower down, so you've already wasted photos taking it with such a poor yeah. background. Yeah, so yeah, if yeah. you think about what you want before you begin, you can mm -hmm. save a lot of time. No, I, I, I agree with you completely. Sorry if I'm writhing, because you've I'm... You've been bitten. I'm one of those people who's just delicious to mosquitoes. I love people like you. <laughs> my wife is like that. I go out with her. She's like my my uh, own insect. I saw your arm. It's yeah, covered no, no, in bites. You can't, you can't see. I'm just getting. I'm just like getting. Uh, it's okay. It's fine. It's I just, think it's because I've been bitten so many times. I think you just get. I don't know if you get an immunity to uh, it. Or? I don't know. I've been bitten a lot. <laughs> That's kind of. A, yeah. Thank, also, so you're blaming the victim. Thanks a lot. <laughs> but I like it. No, no. This is great. This is great. I I will suffer for 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 this podcast. Um, let's move on to the next photograph, which is. Uh, and listen, just it's just adding a new dimension to the conversation. Okay, um, this photograph is of a leopard cat in why don't you tell, talk about where you photo because I, I think I know the backstory um, talk about the leopard cat where you photographed it what that experience was like and what is it about leopard cats that's kind of interesting to people who've never seen them 
Uh, so I took it not a million miles from here. I don't really want to give away the location, sure. but it was in the in the country park of Sai Kung. Okay. And so one of the things I do, I do a lot of walking around at night. Mm -hmm. A lot of the animals in Hong Kong are nocturnal. Yeah, we've done it and together. Yeah. Yeah. And it's great fun, and you know, a lot of herbs normally and stuff, and and uh, you never know what you're going to see. Yeah. And so again, it was just one of those moments, I think, when uh, there was a leopard cat. I was actually on my own at the time, and uh, so I didn't have anyone else to, to help me with a torch or whatever. And it came down, and, and because I had the torch on it, all I could see was its eyes. Yeah. I didn't know if it was a civet cat or a cat cat or, a, uh, or, or what it was. Um, so I put my torch down, and of course it, 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 it went away. So then I set up my camera, um, well, I pushed my eyes so very, very high. I think it was, that, uh, I forget what, I, what it was, but it was very high. It was about four or 5,000 um, and very shallow depths of field. It was, it was quite a long way away. And uh, I think it was F125, F2, uh, uh, two hundredth of a, a second shutter speed. And I waited and it came back. Wow. Oh. And that's how I got the shot nice. because then I had the camera right. set up whereas otherwise I'd have been fiddling around with my dials and, and I, I took the flash shot and because you, you couldn't really see what it was mm -hmm. then that's kind of how I got the shot. A bit of, a bit of luck, a bit of you know, dialing in because yeah. a very high ISO meant that the flash didn't go boom and, right. and make all those horrible harsh shadows yeah, that yeah, you yeah. get. So that, that, that technically I'm quite proud of but one of the reasons I chose that photo, well, there's, there's two, I think. A, because what you normally try and do with wild animal photography is either you try and get a very rare species mm -hmm. and photograph it well, or you try and find a completely new angle or a different way of looking at a common species, right. like an egret, or everyone's seen the white yeah. egret flying yeah, across yeah. the sky. So how do you do that differently? Mm -hmm, you know? mm -hmm. um, and so this, why I chose this image was uh, this, and this is what annoys me quite a lot in a way, it's quite funny, uh, the, this was the most liked photo I've ever taken. Oh, really? From the Hong Kong, my own page, Hong Kong Snakes page, yeah, everywhere yeah, else yeah, that yeah. I posted it. Isn't that funny? And technically... Goddamn YouTube with your great cat videos. <laughs> exactly. So, and, and my friend and I laugh about this, is if you look at all the major wildlife photography uh, shows, exhibitions and awards, it's mammals that always win. Sure. Normally furry mammals. Yeah. And not that I have anything against furry mammals but uh, you know i'd like to see it's a bit take their rightful place yes but it's never going to happen <laughs> yeah. so it makes me laugh when and, and the reason i chose this photo was because are you pandering to the masses got it and that's <laughs> when you when you look at as a photographer if you want more likes ah okay well let me describe the photo so oh. so a leopard cat is really funny because so i think at the time that you made this image uh in hong kong somebody had seen a leopard cat in uh, one of the parks and they they had gone into into uh, into shock of some sort because they're not used to seeing wildlife and they thought it was a real tiger. They thought it was like a and, and you know, there used to be tigers in Hong yeah. Kong like a few hundred years South ago. South Asian tiger, yeah. Right, and so a leopard cat is the size of a domestic cat, domesticated cat. Really pretty cat. I mean, it looks like a, a miniature leopard. And the AFCD, which is the uh, AFCD, is uh, agriculture. What's it again? Fisheries it's conservation. So yeah. ag and fish before any conservation. Right. right. And so they have, uh, in the import and export uh, uh, filings in Hong Kong, restrictions on, on bringing them in and out. Because in Mong Kok, you can find leopard cats for sale. So some people have them as domestic animals. And uh, it is something to be out in the in the country parks and stuff and seeing usually the eye shine yep. from these from these little cats so the image has a leopard cat looking so openly at you and that's what's quite magical about the photograph is that okay so it's on the ground there is a little bit of shrub there's a little bit behind it as well it's just sort of sitting there looking at you like a normal cat but it looks like a leopard yeah <laughs> which is so it's it's uh it is a magical but as you say, it's a heartstrings thing, I guess. Yeah, no, it's, it's uh, again, I'm, I'm very proud of it as a shot. It's just... Um, it's hard to get them. It's, they're hard to well, photograph. They're hard. They're very hard to find. Yeah. I mean, I've seen them before, 
normally I get a glimpse of a tail or I'll see a yes, like shine of an eye 30 or something. Feet, 30 feet or 30 normally meters up, up in a tree. tree. Yeah. Actually, he, that was on a bank. It wasn't wow. on the ground. It was okay. up on a bank. I was actually shooting slightly okay, up, which okay, helped okay. With, the, with that perception that it's, yeah. it's looking at you. Yeah. Because instead of looking up, it's looking down. Kind of down. Yeah, so yeah, it, yeah. It gives more impact. Yeah. The, the, the kind of angle there. That's great. Um, so... What are so the, I got distracted. I, I forgot what I was going to say. That we can move on. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> because the actually the uh, normally I kind of go with three photographs, but you, I I would if I could I'd I'd, use, I'd I want to highlight all your. Oh, photographs. I know what I was going to say. Okay, go ahead. We're going to talk about um, from my photography now. When I'm out uh, taking pictures, I've I've got two things in mind. One is looking at the different animals to try and get really beautiful photos to show to my audience and thinking about the books that I have coming up hopefully for um, the Hong Kong animals, wild creatures, hongkong.org. Um, so for example, I was just out on a walk with some friends yesterday and they wanted to run up a hill. Well, mm. because of my accident, I can't do that anymore. And I prefer to hike rather than and look at animals and, and run up a hill. So off they went. So I was on my own down by a stream for about an hour and I found the Stemwazels, and it's that time of year when they're mating and, and laying eggs. The, the what are they? Dragonflies. The dragon, okay, small right. dragonflies. Okay, okay. They're the ones where actually the difference is their eyes don't touch. Yeah. And they're, they're much smaller and fragile. Right, right. They're very beautiful. Pretty, oh. Very small. Yeah. And so I thought, oh, I'll take some pictures of them. And in my mind, I've got, like I said, I've got two, two ideas. One is, how can I get a really interesting picture for my blog? And the other thing, always in the back of my mind, is how can I get the most amazing, exceptional picture to try and win an award? Okay. That's yeah. kind of what's in my mind at the moment. Yeah, yeah. And that happens extremely rarely. Of course. It has to be, like I said, either a, a, an iconic animal. I mean, if I could get a leopard cat playing with its kittens, you know, it's sort sure. of like, ka-ching, yeah, 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 <laughs> in yeah, the yeah. bag, right? Um, but it's... Uh, Finding the mammals in Hong Kong is, is extremely difficult. Right. Um, so anyway, going back to these dragonflies, so I'm spending time with them, I watched, and then just all of a sudden, because there was one dragonfly laying its eggs and another one flying over the top, so I tried to get that image where oh. you've got one flying and one laying eggs, and it's quite nice. And then another female la landed laying its eggs, in exactly the same position, but the mouth parts of these two dragonflies were touching. Wow. So you've got this almost uh, mirror image. That's incredible. And I've never seen dragonflies touch their mouth parts before. So I thought, <laughs> this, 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 this. Neither have I. <laughs> so I thought, well, I mean, it, it's a very, very interesting image. And so then you've got this mirror image of these two female dragonflies. Mm. And... So now I have to process it and, and, and see how good it is. The other thing I was doing was taking pictures of bird wing butterflies. So again, I know where they are at the moment. Mm -hmm. And they're these, they're, they're actually the only protected arthropod in the whole of Hong Kong. And they're these huge spiky caterpillars, mm. uh, very interesting colors. Yeah. So again, trying to find a frame within the vine plants that they have. So always wow. trying to, by, by pushing myself, and yeah. I, would, I would say this to any budding photographers, is if you want to get better, enter some awards because that's when you realize yeah. how damn good some of these photographers are. Sure, sure, sure. Um, but I do have a caveat on that in that a lot of these awards have a huge amount of post-processing. Mm -hmm, if you mm -hmm. ever see sort of the uh, before right. and after images, i.e. the image that you actually shoot and mm. the one which ends up yeah, winning no, the award. You yeah, know, for sure. As you know, there's a lot of stuff that goes sure. on after you take the photo right right that's a whole conversation <laughs> <laughs> but let's let's move on to your other photograph because it's also uh oh, we have another one yeah well yeah it's, oh, it's, the, it's a cloak okay. and dagger bee no, just because your photos are so good we're okay. gonna do them all like cool. um cool. cloak and dagger bee let me just describe the image so you you've talked about the importance of having a nice of removing separating so in this case the the, the background is a perfect beautiful rich green uh out of focus and against that is this high kind of contrasting violet flower that has four or five petals to it with a deep sort of 
uh, I guess it's a, is that the stamen that goes down deep? Yep. Okay, so deep stamen and Like the stamen comes out. Right, so okay. It's the right. bell. Right. So, uh, but it's perched on it is this incredible insect. Uh, so the name of this photograph is a cloak and dagger bee. Um, so it's this beautiful bee looking insect that's blue and black. And what's really amazing as well is that you can see the reflection in its eyes that is matrix like mesmerizing. It's um, so describe how you made this photo, when you made this photograph, how you made this photograph, and why. Uh, like for me, it's just like, I, like all your photographs, I'm just, I'm just amazed. So. so if I was to do this photo again, mm -hmm. I'd actually, oh, I've already cropped it a bit, so I'd probably even do it more. Wow, wow, wow yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, this, this is one of those highly technical, took me three days oh, wow. to, uh, to shoot. Um, this was in Xingmun, uh, some beautiful little butterfly gardens there. Mm -hmm. And I was there because I'd seen quite a few hummingbird hawk moths. Yeah, yeah. And the blue banded bee. Right. And those are the ones I actually wanted to photograph. Right, right, right. And the, uh, the serendipitous element of this is I thought, I mean, it, this insect is half a centimeter yeah. long. Yeah. I mean, it, they are tiny. Mm -hmm. And. I didn't know that that's actually what I was taking right. when I took right. the photo. Right. I thought it was a blue banded bee because if you look, it yeah, looks, it looks, you can't tell. It's flying it's, in, it's, it's small, got the flower. For sure. So basically, um, I tried with different lenses, different focal lengths, with flash, without flash, different shutter speed. So I probably took about 2,000 different photos. Wow, wow, wow. And I have other photos which I've used sure. recently on my blog with the blue banded bee. Um, and the, the tricky thing with this is. And one thing that my, my, one of my mentors has, has always said is, you have to get it full frame. Mm. Now, how do you get a six center, a, 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 tiny, a six tiny. millimeter bee yeah. full frame? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that crop is probably, it's probably about 50%. Right. But that meant, um, I, I was actually using a hundred millimeter lens. Wow. Although I actually had more success with the longer ones. But that one turned out because I was able to get there and then have my finger ready, and again, it's that burst. Yeah. Of yeah. And uh, unless the insect is, 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 I don't know, dead or, or, or not moving, mm -hmm. it's an extremely difficult insect to try, because they move so quickly sure, as well. And sure. they don't like people. No, no. Um, one thing that I do try and do is I use quite a large diffuser sometimes, and by hiding behind that, they don't recognize me right, as a human. Right, right. They just think I'm a, I'm a building or yeah. something. Yeah, so it's, funny, it's funny how animals, like when I go around on my bicycle or motorcycle, uh, animals, especially monkeys, if I'm if I'm wearing uh, if I'm in the car, of course it's one of those things. If you're in the car, they just don't even yeah. you know, they associate it's you like with an animal, tigers, right? Yeah. yeah. But uh, so like the monkeys, if I if I wear like the helmet and the, and the glasses, they don't quite know I'm a I'm a threat. But if I take off the glasses and they see my eyes, they're like, oh shit. I'm out of here. So it's it's a. I'm sure insects must also oh, be absolutely. like. Absolutely. I mean, you can see it with birds all the time. If you're walking near a bird, don't look at it, mm. and then when you look at it, it'll fly away. Right. It, right. It's a day. It they triggers, see your yeah. eyes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one of the things the guy teaching me photography talked to me about was if you're trying to get close to like birds or bigger mammals or whatever, sing a little song to yourself or pretend you're chewing gum and don't look at them because if they think you're already eating well mm. you don't want to eat them right right <laughs> it's right, a funny right, little trick right, right. going up to birds and you're still talking to yourself people think you're that's a bit loopy but super interesting. also don't walk straight at them you're always walking yeah, in zigzag yeah, yeah, kind yeah. of thing so it's quite it's quite funny the sort of craft of trying to get right. close to things like that tiny little bee and again you've got the you've got that sort of craft which allows me to get that yeah. image yeah. Um, and again part of that sculpture is always to try and look for that background that you don't have any distractions or whatever mm -hmm. and then you've got the luck that it was not the bee that I was trying to right. photograph and then as you pointed out I've never seen that before that hexagonal it's like the back end of a Lamborghini or yeah, something yeah. That, that design the eyes. inside yeah, yeah. so now of course what I want to do is get 10 times closer right, to that right, bee so right. there's all and then because that that's a great image i love it yeah. but it's not it's not award-winning right yet. it's got different it's got sure. flaws to yeah, it. yeah so yeah. to try and then how then do i perfect my how 
Well, I, actually, I've seen this great image of this guy. What he did is he, he took a flower and he cut out the end of it and put his camera on it. So then the, the, the bees and things were actually going into, into the, the yeah. flower and then yeah. you have a remote. So that's the kind of thing. I'm, I've right. got these tentacles that I call them, but I, I think I've got about eight different things that I want to do which uh -huh. will take my photography to, a, to another level. Wow. Rob, this is cool to just talk shop and d dive in. Uh, I'm not going to ask you to talk about your gear because uh, no free pub for those companies. Um, because we could do that. Uh, more importantly, you do give courses. You have given courses. Somebody who's listening to this and is a beginning photographer, do you have a bit of advice? When you've given classes, what, what would you say has helped them as photographers move ahead? Sure. I think... I mean, equipment is important. Ever so sure. funny, I've heard so many interviews, oh, no, equipment isn't important. No, it's important. Yeah. Because you, you don't get that crispness, that clarity, that ability to focus quicker sure. with, with the uh, lower-end equipment. You just don't. Um, so one of the things is invest as much as you can in the equipment. So get a full-frame camera, get, get some decent lenses, um, and that... Just that alone, it, it, it will help your photography. Yep. Or it will te you can then learn. I mean, obviously, you don't want to go out and buy the best and not know how to use it, which is, I think, what people are saying. But once you begin to squeeze the different best bits out of your equipment, I think that's when you realize that you are learning more. Mm -hmm. So I suppose my advice to people is during about 30 years um, between my photojournalism and actually doing my doing my blog I still took photos and I, I look back at them and I, you know, I did an exhibition uh, and stuff and I look at them and go yeah they're okay the biggest difference was I went to other people to try and learn mm -hmm. how to be a better photographer yeah and um, so whether it's uh, there's one book I'd recommend called, uh, it's by Tony and Chelsea Northrup and they're, they're excellent you know, they, will, they will really they dive quite and they're very good teachers as well and there's video components to it okay. um, but I think it's really coming back for me what changed for me was how, what is the image that I want to create and how do I go about creating it because then what happens is, okay, so if I want a picture of that flower that really stands out, what do I want it? I want it to stand alone. So what about the background? And mm -hmm. then you think, well, hold on a minute. If it's a pink flower, how about I take a meter piece size of card mm -hmm. and put that behind it? Then you've got this lovely blurry yellow right. background because the camera won't see that it's a yellow piece of sure, card. It just sure. looks like a, a yellow field of barley or something. Yeah. And then you've separated your image because you're thinking of the image that you want, which is that single stem of the pink, yeah. that the, the very pretty pink grass here in yeah. Hong Kong. So I think the, the key thing for me is be very critical of your own photos and really think what is the image you want to create? Because mm -hmm. that's how I got to my, yeah. um, my fork-tailed sunbird yeah. image, was yeah. I want to be able to blow up that image to a two-meter print, wow. and I want that... Well, uh, some bird in focus, the sharpest, the blurry. Focus. I want this. I want that. I want it at that time of day yeah. because it's going to give me this. Mm -hmm. Well, you're, what I'm listening to is actually uh, a mastery of, of what you're, of your. Not to saying that you're, you know, not to hide from the idea of being a master, but it's kind of getting towards that mastery of, of what you're doing in anything. So. And again, Respect. I look at the different other photographers, whether it's Andy Rouse or um, Tin Man or, or whoever it is, and look at those award-winning photos, and you see what's really great about them. Unfortunately, most of them are of polar bears and right. cheetah cubs and stuff. <laughs> furry animals, <laughs> furry mammals, or maybe rhinos occasionally, and or well, elephants <laughs> or giraffes or something. But what 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 what's good about this uh, well, the podcast I think is also what's neat is uh, that being able to share. So one of the people I had here was uh, you know uh, Carolina and uh, Arthur, her husband. The two, two go herping all the time. Yeah, yeah, I've seen and that. But she's really, really good. Yeah. She's re and she's you know really showing the beauty of, of snakes, and it's just like yeah, and, and your your snake images. I mean, 
I, I love that everybody's um, quality and, and effort, all of it is just getting better and better. Like there doesn't seem to be a kind of peak of oh, we've reached the best photographs ever. No, no but no, it's, it's still coming. I think what I see with a lot of those photos and, and myself included is you get to a point where you, you're learning about light mm. and how it works, yeah. which is, a, which is well, sounds it pretty is. obvious, right? But yeah. you know, photography actually means painting with light in Greek. And to learn about how it diffuses and this and this, and you go out and then you find the species and you take its photo. The tricky thing then is to find behavior. Right, right. To actually be in a place. And again, you know, who, uh, snake behavior is maybe not as interesting as a, as a jaguar mm-hmm. <laughs> or a cheetah or a lion or mm. an elephant or whatever it is. So I think there are limitations just from a point of view of you, if you want to make your photos you know, sort of more exciting, right. I suppose. Um, hence, you know, the leopard cat having all those lights. Sure, but... If but I also... show that bee. That, funnily enough, I mean, I think it's because I posted another picture right after it, but that bee that I chose, I think got nine likes. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's like one of my, not least liked, but... but it's, it, it's funny it how that's a... Attention. But it's funny how that has become a barometer of quality to a certain extent. I mean, I realize you have your internal barometer, your internal standard, but it's... I. There, it, it just reinforces the idea that, that to a certain extent, as a communicative uh, object, powerful images should evoke or do evoke something in a, in a viewer, in a receiver, sure. in a thing. So, so okay. Well, I just People... learned uh, yesterday that I've, I've got these three awards coming up, which I can't talk about, but two of those are arthropods. A nice. Uh, insects. Well, yeah. actually one's a spider, but um, it's, it's interesting to see that there's actually... A recognition for that as well as I'm sure the main winner is still going to be a furry <laughs> mammal <laughs> but we won't talk about that anymore ah screw those uh, screw those mammals no I love them too I can't no, wait no, to get over to Sri Lanka yeah, and yeah. start taking some amazing you know I just can't wait to travel again uh, yeah, like yeah, I think course. every single person I talk to okay so I think the buffet is closing as far as uh, feeding the mosquitoes thank you so much Rob for joining me um, I I you know this has been really good uh, I hope I can get a billion people to, to view to view your your websites and to, to order your book uh, and to just be inspired like I, I certainly am inspired good stuff thank, thank you very much you, sir thank you boom Yeah.